distinguished guests, participants, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's delight galore and there is a humble sense of achievement to equip the Sapra Secretariat with, with, with more staff. And in a way, we will take a leap towards the institutionalization of SAP law. We also had several global alliances. We had alliance with UNDP, with UNAIDS, with UNSCAP. We had collaboration with IDLO, International Development Law Organization, based out of Rome. We went ahead with several workshops, studies, seminars, roundtables, producing several research reports, so on and so forth. And even with ADB, we are doing a couple of consulting projects at the moment. So this made us go beyond the, the domain of SAC region, or the walls of SAC region. We became truly a global organization. Becoming a, league, a global organization, you know, apart from a regional organization, uh, did not vouch for that. We tied up with one of our regional apex bodies, uh, CYWAC, South Asian Initiative uh, to End Violence Against Children. Dr. Rinchen Chopul, the Director General of CYWAC, is present here, and I must commend his efforts in bringing the issues connected with children and women to the limelight in the South region. I will, I think, now close my address because there is limitation of time. And in any case, never ever anybody from the audience has ever sort of uh, objected or protested against the short speech. But before I close my address, I would like to give a little piece of advice to all the young lawyers sitting here, including some law students, which is that you must watch a Hollywood movie called 12 Years a Slave. It's a beautiful movie which is based on an incredible true story of a man's struggle for liberty, freedom, and survival. I will read out one little dialogue from that movie. The righteous path may be long, may, may have some hardships, but that eventually takes you to the most desirable destination. So never ever lose sight of a righteous path, whether it be your personal life or it be your professional life. I wish you at the end uh, of two days of amazing deliberations, discussions, and conference. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Patra. Thank you much for your wishes and of course for the brief overview of those uh, great endeavors and of course for those words of wisdom and the spirit that you wish to pass on. Thank you very much once again. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been witness that over the years the region has seen an upsurge in cases of uh, cases related to women, relating to violence and then there are other those uh, extend violence. And however, these rise in meaningful initiatives and participation has also been comparatively uh, encouraging in parallel to that, though in adequate, if I may add that here. And uh, it's a pleasure, uh, rather an honor for us today that we are launching one such endeavor today. It's uh, my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and with the shared much national conscience, conscience and values in their respective <coughs> countries. Geography has made us neighbors, and we must live in harmony, bound by the values of the private rights and the public justice. Thus, the relevance and the need for the SAP law are most imperative, and I respectfully and earnestly wish that the SAP law continue to intensify its global efforts, noble efforts with our individual countries, within the region and assume the globalist role with our friends and organizations like ADB, SAIWA, UNDP, and other great organizations. SAP law continues, and its conference has become a sacred forum for the honorable justice and the legal communities of the region to share their profound wisdom, creating a repository of knowledge 
that celebrates our glorious past and remind us of our commitment to future in words, deeds, and spirit. And it is my, let me elaborate a bit on this by bringing up matters that concern most of us. For instance, almost all the countries of South Asia have prioritized rights in their respective constitutions. However, South Asia is yet to establish a common defense system for preventing or redressing the abuse of rights. Whereas countries in Europe, America, and Africa have evolved common institutional defense mechanism, at the sharp or circular level, we even hesitate to seriously discuss the desirability and possibility of bringing out the regional human rights charter, let alone the Human Rights Commission or the Tribunal. The establishment of common alternative dispute resolution forum for South Asia is still a hard cry. Frankly speaking, we do not have a strong interface between law and politics. A common legal design, resonating to human rights, most of the harness to Russia in overall economic, social, and political integration in the South region. South Asia is a region where people are bound by common socio economic, cultural, and educational ties. The unity of this region all of us value freedom and dignity. However, the institutions created for promoting the system and all of South Asia can play a catalytic role in addressing the challenge to freedom and democracy and steer our civilization to newer heights. To my mind, the legal and judicial community should need a judicial cooperation. Ameliorating the institution by linking law to poverty alleviation, infringement of peace, facilitation of trade and commerce will be rewarded. Regional approach on matters such as legal education, protection of intellectual property rights, conservation and so